So I'm going to talk very briefly and again um, leave this at a very conceptual level uh, from the point of view of what and how we've come at least to one approach to defining the clinical applications of modifying the microbiota of uh, children, uh, A, to see if that has even been uh, possible and what those benefits might have been, uh, and three, most importantly, how can uh, that actually make a difference in terms of what we do with infant, uh, infant nutrition. It is totally clear that a, a, a vertebrate which grows with no microbiome does not actually develop many of its possibilities of both defense and modulation, particularly of the immune system. Each little baby has to develop this microbiota that you heard uh, uh, earlier uh, from Jens actually becomes very stable and very particular to that single individual. It is this change in the population of microbes that happens from the time that a child is born to later life that ultimately determines this relationship of this particular host with its microbiome and, as we'll talk, how it actually develops its immunity and probably many other functions that we have yet to, yet to discover. It is important to realize then that if these microbes are to develop in the lumen of that child and build a particular type of population, ultimately it is the microbes that, ha that enter the lumen of the gut. In that critical initial period of life, they're going to be a major determinant of what ultimately becomes part of that population. So where do the bacteria in the lumen of the baby come from? They don't just grow there. They have to come from the environment. Ultimately, you have to eat them. If we talk about populations of bacteria in very early life, there's not a lot of sources. You either acquire them at the time you're born, you either acquire them every time you eat, or you acquire them from the things that come around an infant. So the bacteria that you acquire at birth, we know now, and I'm just using this as an example, is actually quite um, uh, significant from the point of view of the type of colonization. To illustrate the fact that there are differences between infants born vaginally in the blue columns or infants born by cesarean section. And if you look at the consequences, and again, we make a huge leap of faith here as to what are these relationships, but they start becoming very close. The difference between vaginally born babies and sick section babies goes far beyond the hospital. And there are increasing documentation, both retrospectively and now just beginning, some prospective documentation that there are differences when it comes to disease and pathology, for example, in vaginally born babies versus uh, C-section babies, which ultimately have consequences in later life. The differences that we are now identifying, which go, and this has been replicated now in, in at least four good uh, retrospective studies. Uh, the incidence of um, atopic disease in vaginally born babies tends to be significantly lower than that in babies born by C-section, independent almost of geography. Birth by C-section versus vaginal delivery does cause a significant slowing down of the establishment of the microbiome. It is typically associated with a less diverse microbiota, and you heard a, a little bit already about the importance of diversity, with the consequence of infections as well as allergy. The other source of bacteria is what is going to come and continue coming through the mouth of the infant. Again, almost independent of geography, there seems to be this tendency with wide, wide variations for certain genera, specifically bifidobacteria, for example, to show that there are differences between babies who receive um, uh, uh, breast milk versus not. Not only breast milk is not sterile, it's a constant and regular dose of microbes. So formula feeding that is sterile compared to breast feeding leads also to a slower establishment of intestinal microbiota, to a decrease in diversity and decrease in bifidobacteria with similar consequences. And finally, just, just to briefly talk about the environment. We already saw something similar to this. Sterile and processed foods, sterile feeding early in life, decreased use of fermented foods, 
increased hygienic measures, we clean pretty much everything that a child becomes in contact with. Urban life has taken, away, uh, taken us away from the huge microbial experience that rural infants, particularly rural infants born and raised amongst other species, including many other mammals, uh, has also changed. And we've drastically changed the first days of life as they relate to infant microbial experience with C-section, not to talk about the fact that we cause major, major disruptions in the microbiome of, of, of humans, particularly of infants, when we use antibiotics. All of that leading to a change in our exposure of microbes uh, with an altered uh, microbiota which uh, uh, leads or is associated to these responses both in the lack of protection such as infections, or over-expression, uh, such as allergies. Now, this is an oversimplification, of course, of the fact that on top I mean, we have the lumen where we have antigens and we have microflora through which a number of mechanisms and, and, and which is now we're, we're, we're understanding in a, how fascinating this bacterial epithelial crosstalk is that ultimately de, um, modulates what our immune response is. Most infants are born <clears throat> with um, a relatively large number of indifferentiated lymphocytes, which need differentiation into the, the classes that most of you are familiar with, T helper 1, T helper 2, and T regulatory cells, all of which have their own cytokines that they use for communication between these lymphocytic populations, which leads to normal responses. When these responses are exaggerated, we have a problem. We need these responses. The problem is that abnormal responses lead us to the same thing that we're seeing. If you look at this, uh, this is a very nice review now, year, now a few years old from John Francois Bach showing that our decreased infections and microbial exposure is associated with all, almost a mirror image of both Th1 and Th2 exaggerated responses. Crohn's disease, multiple sclerosis, diabetes, asthma. Almost a mirror image of what we have done with this modulation and modification. What is known that today as the hygiene hypothesis. All of these factors uh, anywhere from rural changes to the number of siblings to the use of antibiotics suggesting that our relationship with microbes has been disrupted. So can we make a difference by modulating this bacterial uh, disruption that we've caused? Can the ingestion of bacteria be beneficial, i.e., can, do we really have probiotics? And this leads to the selection of both more or less good, more or less bad bacteria with two particular genera, lactobacilli and bifidobacteria being potential probiotics when we ingest them. Treatment of diarrhea, by far the best studied clinical effect of these, four meta-analyses at least showing all positive responses relative to reduction of duration in acute enteritis. Prevention of diarrhea, particularly with bifidobacterium uh, lactis, lactobacillus rhamnosus, and L. rotari those three showing very significant decreases in incidence of bacteria, particularly rotavirus diarrhea. Uh, similarly, with antibiotic-associated diarrhea. Again, the more at risk the population, potentially, the better the effect. And interestingly, the population has received the most interest in just the last few years are premature infants. Why? Because they're a prime setup for really drastically changing this microbiota that needs, and it's the prime time, because that's the time that things should actually become well established. Clearly, almost every study that has looked at it is showing a very significant um, change in the frequency with which look at necrot uh, we see necrotizing enterocolitis with bifidobacteria, lactobacilli, or combination of bifido and lactobacilli given in the neonatal intensive care unit. To finish, we are meant to be born vaginally, we are meant to be breastfed, we are meant to be and receive a constant bacterial exposure. C-section, sterile feedings, antibiotics, changes the environment, change that balance with this microbiome that we heard about earlier, leading to inadequate gut barrier function and adequate immune responses, with the hope that we can start moving that pendulum back with the use of oral uh, bacteria for which obviously we need adequate clinical evidence, both in the selection as well as the usage of these.